So chapters uh, two and four were basically just kinematics. That's motion. Uh, then uh, chapter three was uh, math interlude. So was chapter one, really. Uh, just kind of setting the stage uh, uh, for some of the mathematical tools. And so now chapter five introduces us to dynamics. So this is where forces come into play. Okay. So uh, the forces are described by Isaac Newton. So let's, let's kind of explain this. You know, we have, we have an object here and want to make it move. We got to do something to it to make it move. Uh, a force. Now, Newton, in, in his day, did not use the term force. He called it an action on it, made it move. Uh, uh, but in modern terminology, we use the word force to describe that, that interaction in which we try to make the thing move. And so there's different forces, and he started thinking about this and said, okay, the, if it's got more mass, you have to exert a bigger force to make it move. So the relationship between mass and force. And then he thought about it a little further and said, well, you know, if you just have something and you drop it, it falls downwards. And so that means there must be some kind of force on it. Uh, force due to gravity must be pulling on it. And so he thought about it and said, well, let's, let's think about this a little bit more. And he was sort of thinking about uh, these forces uh, during actually a pandemic. Uh, the uh, plague had hit uh, the university where he was studying. And so all the students and all the faculty were sent home and told basically anybody who's still alive in two years, come back and we'll pick back up your studies. And so uh, uh, no remote learning, no computers or anything, no internet, just go home, um, study on your own if you want, come back, we'll pick up our learning in two years for anybody that survives the plague. And so he went back home, and when he was at home, he was out, you know, looking here, and, you know, we can imagine some trees here, okay, and so we got some trees, and there's the squirrel, okay. Okay, forgive my artistic abilities, that's a squirrel. Okay, and he's thinking about it, and the squirrel goes out onto the end of the branch, and is standing there, and the branch sags down a little bit. And so he's watching that, and said, well, that, that, that makes sense, that the, the branch is pulling down uh, because gravity's pulling on the squirrel. But he also knows that in order for a branch to pull down, the branch is pushing. If you just pull a branch down and put something on it, the branch will pop up and push upward on something. So that means that while the squirrel was sitting here, gravity was pulling down the squirrel, but the branch was pushing up on the squirrel just as hard as gravity, and the two were canceling each other out. Then the squirrel wanted to get to the other tree. So what the squirrel did was he jumped to the other tree. And he said, well, how does the squirrel jump? Well, in order to jump, the squirrel went this way, okay? Uh, uh, the squirrel, once it leaves the tree, can't really control how it's moving. Gravity was pulling on the squirrel, accelerating it downward. So he realized that gravity is, that the force of gravity was providing an acceleration. So this is the clue. It doesn't just move you, but it accelerates. And... As the squirrel jumped upwards, the branch was actually pushed downwards. So the squirrel was pushing down on the branch in order to go up. So there was a force in either direction. When the squirrel reached the other side here, this branch went down as the squirrel stopped accelerating downwards. So the squirrel was accelerating upwards in order to slow down. And, and so he realized that there was an upward push on the squirrel due to the downward swinging of the branch. So the squirrel was pushing downward on the branch, the branch was pushing upward on the squirrel. So he ends up with three laws of motion that describe forces, mass, and acceleration. So these are Newton's laws of motion. So, so Newton's laws. Now, we call them the first, second, and third law, but he kind of really figured them out in reverse order. So the third law was the first one he figured out, 
and that was okay if you've got two objects here if this object you know exerts a force on the other object the other object exerts a force on the first object and so he says the force on object one due to object two is equal to the force on object two due to object one but it's in the opposite direction so minus sign and so today we we think of this as vectors so force would be a vector and so this was the first, third law for every force there is an equal and an opposite force now that turns out to be very fundamental uh, uh, for every force equal and opposite force from this we're going to come up with conservation of energy and conservation of momentum so th this is a very fundamental very important concept then the second law he started thinking about it and said well the bigger the squirrel the more the branch deflected so the bigger the force the faster the squirrel wanted to go so in other words if the squirrel if the squirrel was just jumping a short distance this branch didn't depress very much if the squirrel was going a long ways the branch depressed a whole lot more and so he says well that means there's a relationship between the acceleration and the mass and the force so the way he put this was that acceleration is equal to the force divided by the mass so this was newton's second law of motion now we normally write it all in one line today f equals ma okay uh, uh that way it's easier to write than writing a fraction here and, and so forth but still you know he originally wrote it uh acceleration is force over m First law of motion. Well, first law of motion I always thought was, was kind of a, uh, uh, not quite as exciting. First law of motion was a corollary to the second law. And that is that the force is zero, then the acceleration is zero. Well, duh. If F equals MA, then if this is zero, that's zero. Okay, so the way it's normally phrased, though, is that an object at rest will remain at rest, or an object in motion will remain in uniform motion. Uniform meaning it does not speed up, does not change, slow down, does not change direction, unless a force acts on it. So in order to have any acceleration, you must have a force. And so that is Newton's first law of motion. And so th th these are Newton's laws. And so that's basically the theory that you need for uh, chapter 5. Uh, so the rest of what we'll be doing here is a couple definitions and then applying things.